Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts Farm for the New Order as in our latest series, Mikhail Matkovsky of the Moderate Wing of the RFP in Magadan. Now, about the Shafirovich series, um, I just learned that in Toolbox Theory you can actually elect a Shafirovich. <sighs> so, here's what I have planned. Just because you can elect Shafirovich in Toolbox Theory doesn't mean his content, is, as far as I'm aware, you elect him as a condemn and then he flips to a bundle of sticksism at say a regional stage or whatever, which is kind of weird for me. Like that's ridiculous to go from to go from uh, condemned to bundle of sticksism is weird. He, he should either start off them or off them, and then go bundle of sticksism, or start a condemn, start as condemn and just go to off them because you know he, he's like I said, he's only a, a klepto or a non a klepto, uh, a klepto, crypto. Crypto. He's only a crypto or a proto bundle of six first, not a full blown one. Doesn't implement. I think he implements what like two and a half of the five tenants of bundle of sixism. So yeah. So what I, what I think I'll do is I'll just play Sheriff Everett as normal. We're not canceling the series or anything. Don't worry, one. Um, and then when Toolbox series releases and we can do the whole electing Sheriff Everett, I'll just make a video on it showing you what it's about, what all the events there, and yeah, that'll be that. Now onwards we go as Matkovsky. January 1st, 1962, the New Order. New Order has ascended upon the world with the triumph of the Axis powers in the Second World Conflict. The world has been forever changed. Yesterday's great empire is now dust under the boot of today's victors. A German lands on the moon as Mustache Man fades. In America, the old system lies shattered. The Mediterranean's power balance lies on a knife's edge. China, little more than a slave of Japan, begins to transform itself. And in Russia, long-damned warlords realize their destiny. Very good. Now, there he is. Magdan Mikhail Matkovsky. Since the birth of the Russian bundle of six party, Mikhail Matkovsky competed with Konstantin Rodzevsky for control. Rodzevsky was aggressive and idealistic and openly supported a mustache man's hack and courageism. Oh, excuse me. Well, Makovsky was more subtle and di diplomatic and saw the racial hatred the uh, the hack and courageers held for Russians plainly. The two men often butted heads but worked together for the dream of a Russia free of redism. Oh, excuse me. Now, when the hack and courageers invaded the Soviet Union, that dream suddenly became a reality as the RFP organized an invasion of the Russian Far East. However, Radzevsky's refusal to uh, denounce Nash, uh, or Bundle of Sixism, even as the um, hack and courageers carried out a removal against the Russian people, was the breaking point for Makovsky. He knew that Germany would never tolerate a strong Russia, even a Bundle of Six one, and Radzevsky was only leading the nation towards suicide. Matkovsky and his supporters took control over the port of Magadan and declared that Radzevsky was a traitor to the motherland, and only Matkovsky would be able to reunite Russia under a true Bundle of Sixism. Matkovsky's clique has now spent years preparing to strike south and finish Radzevsky once and for all. Resources in Magadan are scarce, forcing Matkovsky to turn to unusual sources of help. Mercenaries from all over the world have come to Magadan seeking fame and fortune, but the greatest source of support lies across the Pacific, the United States, persuading the Americans will be no easy task, but if anyone can do it, it is Matkovsky indeed. Now, gateway into Russia, daily political power gain plus 0 0.02, and trade deal opinion factor plus 15%. Beyond mere circumstance, the Vajd had a specific intent when he chose Magadan to launch our struggle. The shores of this icy Pacific port bring many blessings. Smugglers from Kanchaka and Alaska alike carry great boons to be processed in the city every day. The Vajd's government grows from the hub's riches, and in turn, so does our legitimacy. Now, bundle of six splitters, recruitment population factor 5%, attack plus 5%, and division recovery rate plus 5%. Long ago, the RFP was a united organization, free from the civil strife that plagues everything in Russia. However, this unity did not last long. The doctrinal differences that divided its two heads, uh, Konstantin Rodzevsky and Mikhail Matkovsky, had simmered for years and per uh, perhaps for decades. It finally came into a head when Matkovsky seized the, uh, the port town of Magdan for his own use. He promises a free Russia, an unshackled Russia, a, a Russia liberated from the chains of suffering and uh, poverty. Uh, only time will tell if his promise holds. Now, heirs of Harbin, minus 10% base stability, plus 20% factory output. In the aftermath of the RCW, the remainder of the White Army retreated into Harbin as exiles, nursing their wounds and plotting the overthrow of the Soviet Union. Uh, before long, however, a bundle of sixes and coalesced from the city. Under the leadership of Rodzevsky Makovsky, the RFP soon became the premier party of the Russian emigres. As the Union collapsed, the Whites and the RFP formed a united front against the Reds, and for a time they were successful until infighting split them apart. Now the three splinters of Vifer Power, each claiming to be the rightful heir of Harpin. I mean, Rodzevsky is the rightful heir of Harpin. It's his party, so no, no real question there. Now, promise to reform. Now that we have stated our intent to ensure freedom for our own citizens, it is time to appeal to the United States directly, instead of beating around the bush in an address made by our Vaj in front of the citizens of Magadan and directed at the White House. He will say that the regime, even though it was born out of the RFP, is open to reform. It will not fight it, and will, uh, but embrace it instead. The hope is that this great call for reform will reach the ears of the congressman and even the president himself, and will finally change their minds regarding the issue of Russia and how best to approach it. 
Desperate times, after all that we've done, it has come to this. Our food supplies are running out, our winterized equipment barely works in the winter winds, and our farms and factories are non-functional. The winter might have come and gone, but it has left its mark on our efforts to stabilize the realm and gain traction amid the harsh Siberian conditions. Perhaps it is time to look outward using Matkovsky's plans to reach out to foreign powers and emigrate to support his cause in Russia. We have three options we can go through. The Tsar residing in Jida is our unwilling enemy at best, but perhaps we can convince his clique to accept a ceasefire. The Americans under their President Nixon may be inclined to support us, um, provided we make them promises of, of reform. Finally, the Russian emigres, the most prominent of which is the influential bundle of sticks person Anastasi Vonsiansky, might be, be persuaded to... Um, let's say throw, not through. There are resources behind our cause. Regardless of whom we convince to support us, one thing is clear, the party will not survive uh, alone. I think Von Siatsky is kind of not only underused, but he's a complete waste. Like, I feel like Von Siatsky should already either A, be in Russia as a conflict lord himself, or B, be another route in Magadan, where he's like the, the actual orthodox bundle of sticks person. Like, you'd have, you know, you have Rodzevsky, the insane Natsok, then you'd have Von Siatsky, who's the actual, just actual bundle of sticks person. Like, he, he'd, he'd, um... He'd like to get, say, Russia into whatever faction Italy's in, be it the Pact of Rome, the uh, Mediterranean Bloc, or the uh, Imperial Alliance. So he'd be the bundle of six person, the orthodox one. And then there'd be Malkovsky, who's the compromising, well, semi, the, the pretend compromise bundle of six person. Then, of course, there'd be Petlin, the actual reformer. Now. The true heir of Harbin. The RFP, as it was known in Harbin, is now gone. Long displeased with Rodzevsky's policies and rhetoric. Malkovsky has his wing of the party. And, and Malkovsky and his wing of the party has taken control of Magadan and are now moulding it to suit their purposes. No longer shall the party struggle in the mud while the whole of Russia suffers. No more thuggery, no more rhetoric of hatred. Mother Russia calls us to our fold to, to rescue her from ruin. Before Malkovsky can do this, uh, can do his duty for his motherland, however, he must rule alone, without constraint and free of disloyalty. While he trusts his wing of the party, he must cross dissent, he must crush dissent among the ranks. All those suspected of loyalty to Rodzevsky shall find themselves purged with his political hold over Magdalene secure. Malkovsky shall do his sacred duty, one that he has steeled himself to do ever since the heady days of Harbin. Under his guidance, Russia shall, sta shall stand again, soul strong, unrivaled. Um, from what I know, the only thing Malkovsky was ever good at was sleeping with other men's wives. Now... Mikhail Matkovsky, the Vosd of the Heart, Division Recovery Rate plus 10%. In so many ways, Mikhail Alexeyevich Mat uh, Matkovsky display displays a form of Russian bundle of sixism that contrasts itself against Rodzevsky's formulation. Where Rodzevsky is dogmatic, Matkovsky is pragmatic. Where Rodzevsky is a skilled fire rate, uh, fire rate orator, uh, Matkovsky is the negotiator using his tact and political acumen to sway political enemies to his side. Where Rodzevsky praised the anti small hat initiatives for, uh, from the black shirts, Matkovsky despised their thuggery. For a brief moment, their goals aligned. The results of their cooperation saw the membership of the RFP rise and peak as more and more Russian emigres saw the appeal of bundle of sticksism. Then the great uh, the, the GPW erupted, with the Germans waging a conflict of removal upon Russia. The uh, differences between these two simmered, despite uh, Mustache Man's destructive removal intent, or removing intent. Rodzevsky sought his support, dreaming of Russia free from redism at last. Matkovsky had no such illusions. Germany's conflict against the Soviet Union, and therefore against Russia, lay bare their racial hatred for Russians. No matter what appeal the RFP could garner, the... Um, Hacking Kreutzers did not factor any independent Russia into their plans. However, true to Matkovsky's tact, he uh, tacked. He and his clique remained silent and bided their time, growing their power in the intervening years. When the time came, they seized the city of Magadan from Rodzevsky, driving the loyalists out and, uh, and officially splitting the party. Now in charge of his own domain, Matkovsky seeks to save Russia from her ruin. Uh, the, the means to this end lay across the ocean past the Japanese America. However, even for an experienced negotiator such as Matkovsky, convincing any foreign power is a difficult task, yet he will not let mere doubt stop him. Now, let me check the recording, because uh, I actually recorded about 10 minutes of this beforehand, and um, I didn't have the mic on because I plugged it out for the new series trailer number 6. So, yeah. All right, everything looks good. Good. Okay, I think we're all good. Yeah. Nice. Bundle of sixism. There we are. Onwards. I think we only have, like, what, 300,000 people in Magadan and the surrounding areas? Yeah, not great. Considering Rodzevsky's will have, like, over a million. And Cheetah has about 400,000. Rodzevsky really is the most, should be the most powerful one. He should have the most troops. Cheetah can get far too many troops. They have a ridiculous amount of troops. It's too many. Now. Like, as Cheetah, you can get around, like, 40,000 men, which is roughly 10% of your population. Like, if you had 10% of your population as Rodzevsky, you'd have, like, 100,000 men, even before going into a conflict with Cheetah or Magadan. It's insane. 
Now, the Free State of Magadan. Once Mikhail Matkovsky was an enthusiastic member of the RFP, within the exiled community of Harbin, few still held any reverence for the old guards of the White Movement, the old men that had lost Russia to the hands of the Reds. A bundle of Sixism, a modern ideology, a rejection of the decadent liberalism and unnatural socialism seemed to Matkovsky the way forward. Russia would be made strong. Once the Soviet Union inevitably crumbled, the true heirs of Harbin would come forth from Japanese Manchuria and begin the Great Crusade to liberate Russia. Konstantin Rodzevsky brought doubt to Matkovsky's mind. The so-called Vojd of the RFP was an, was an amoral but a br brute. Brute. His associates jumped up thugs, men of no calibre, the refuse of the Russian community in Harbin. When Germany invaded Russia, brutalising its people, the RFP's leader wrote a sycophantic letters of praise to the men who despoiled Russia. No, Rodzevsky could not be trusted to save Russia. And so Matkovsky began to plot, with the help of Nikolai Petlin, uh, and a man known in Harbin for his ties to the Russo-American community, Malkovsky waited. The opportunity of a lifetime came in the late 50s. Yagoda's pathetic Soviet remnants launched a futile war to conquer the Central Siberian Republic. The strain of fighting broke down both nations, letting the white community in Harbin free to strike. The invasion broke the back of Yagoda state, liberating Cheetah, Amur, and Magadan. In this moment of triumph for the RFP, Malkovsky enacted his plan. The port city of Magadan was seized, along with a great deal of the RFP's invasion force. Rodzevsky's thugs were pushed back to Amur, deprived of the critical port of Magadan. The Magadan, in Magadan, the true leader of the RFP awaits. There is much to... Why is the A capital, capitalized? That's weird. There is much work to be done. The remaining Rodzevsky loyalists must be purged. Foreign contacts must be, must, be, uh, must be reached. And critical supplies of weapons and mercenaries must be brought in. In Matkovsky's path... Or Matkovsky's path ahead remains long and hard, and nevertheless he presses on. Only he has the strength to save Russia from its anarchy. Treaters appeal to America's white emigre community to garner support and ensure Matkovsky's success, deal with the mad Vosh and Amur and the decrepit white junta in Cheetah to unite the Far East against Redism and begin the reunification of Russia under the true Vosh. I believe it's um, as... Um, What's his face? Uh, Matkovsky, that you can literally cook uh, either Buryatia or uh, definitely Irkutsk. You can cook Irkutsk out of Alden. It's incredibly easy. You can definitely do it to sheet if you only do one side of the folk street. You, can, you, can you probably reunify faster than... Um, well, I've actually reunified faster than the Central Siberians as Rod Zevsky, so you can definitely do it as Cheetah. Yeah. <coughs> now... The Far East, the Russian Far East, is far and away the least populated region in Russia and contains some of the most treacherous and hostile landscapes in the continent. The cataclysmic collapse of the Soviet Union did little to change the state of affairs, and even a far flung region such as this is now home to all manners of conflict lords seeking to stake their claim to Russia. In the aftermath of the collapse, Genrik Yagoda fled east with the remnants of the Soviet Presidium and re-established order over the province of Irkutsk. From there, he has solidified an iron reign over the region that has frequently come into contact with neighbouring rival conflict lords such as the Central Siberian Republic. It was not to last, however, as disaster soon struck. As soon as struck from the Manchurian city of Harbin, dark forces crossed the Amur and marched north to wage a bloody conflict of vengeance against Redism. Konstantin Rodzevsky and his um, RFP were the tip of this invasion spear, shattering Yagoda's influence in the east and establishing his own um, regime. Why is Rodzevsky and the RFP in green? Because we'd be reading the exact same thing as Irkutsk. And that's weird. Now, um and establishing his own regime in the city of Zaya. It wasn't long, however, before Rodzevsky himself was threatened with collapse. A moderate faction of the RFP, led by Mikhail Matkovsky, grew disgusted with Rodzevsky's admiration of the Hackenkreutz invaders, and over time came to resent his dogmatic rhetoric. These tensions came to a head and resulted in Matkovsky's loyalists snatching the key port of Magadan from Rodzevsky's grasp. Sensing their chance, white army remnants based in Harbin secured control over their old stronghold in Cheetah. With the claimant of their own, one Mikhail II, they plan to restore the monarchy to Russia by whatever means necessary. Meanwhile, the final threat to Yagoda's power came in the form of mutiny. The former NKVD officer of Larry Sablin, a young and idealistic revolutionary, seized control over the province of Buryatia and declared an open revolt against Yagoda in the Presidium. As of 1962, the war, this war is still on conflict, is still raging, and it is unclear who will come out on top. To the north, the region has devolved into total anarchy. Very few have made their homes in this Arctic hell, and there is not likely to be much in the way of action here. However, there are scattered rumours amongst the tribes and villages of the north of a powerful figure with the strength to reunify the nation. The Russian Far East is a desolate and blood-soaked land, and it is not likely to get any better until this wasteland is united once and for all. Features, defend the last remnant of the soul of the Soviet Union or bring about its destruction. Make the most of what you have in a desolate le in the desolate landscape, and be wary of the north. There is the team, and there is the team he made money out of the Grand War. <laughs> Love it. Dedicated the soft boy anarchist and of course Korean James Bond. Very nice artwork actually. Mm. Very nice indeed. But alright lads, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you will enjoy this series. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing and supporting the channel on Patreon. Shout out to our patron Ryan McCready. I shall see you down in the comment section of this video and I shall see you in the next video. But until then, goodbye.